Shimad Bhagavatam Gantaraja Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charte Swavigya Swarat Janmadya Sayatam Vaya Itaratas Charte Swavigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyanti Atsurayaha Tene Brahma Hrudaya Adikavaye Mojantija Suraya Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisa Gomisha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisa Gomisha Dharma Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Amna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He's directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. Is it he, is, is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? It's the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes, of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Are they from merited upon him, Lord Shri Krishna? Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world? Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world? I meditate world. upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Bhutra. Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Purir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avurudhyate Cha Kriti Bihi Susu Vistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such a truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient self for God. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, Rahashimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature 
It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hiryan Taksto Hibadrani. We do not to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preso badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna, from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas Tamo Bhava Tadarajas Tamo Bhava Kamalo Badayas Chaye Kamalo Badayas Chaye Chete Etar Enavidam Chete Etar Enavidam Stitvam Satve Prasidati Stitvam Satve Prasidati By development of devotional service By development of devotional service One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance And thus material lust and avarice are diminished Evam prasana manaso Bhagavad bhakti yogataha Bhagavad tattva vigyanam Mukta sangha sijayate When these impurities are wiped away the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly Vidyate Hirdaya Grantis Shidyante Sarvasamsaya Shiyante Jashikarmani Trista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding absolute truth does not do that. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna is devotee in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam Kanta one chapter seventeen verse number forty three and forty four. Sa Esa Etar Hyad Yastya Asanam Parti Vochitam Asana Parti Vochitam Pitama Heno Panyastam Pitama Heno Panyastam Rajnaranyam Vivikshata Rajnaranyam Vivikshata Aste Duna Sarajarsi Aste Duna Sarajarsi Kora Vendra Siyola San Kora Vendra Sriyola-san Gajavaye Mahabhagas Gajavaye Mahabhagas Chakravarti Prihachrava Chakravarti Prihachrava Translation by Srila Prabhupada The most fortunate Emperor Maharaj Parikshit, who was entrusted with the kingdom of Hastinapur by Maharaj Yudhisthira, when he desired to retire to the forest is now ruling the world with great success due to his being glorified by the deeds of the kings of the Kuru dynasty. 
purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, the prolonged sacrificial ceremonies undertaken by the sages of Naimni Sharanya were begun shortly after the demise of Maharaj Pariksit. The sacrifice was to continue for 1,000 years. And it is understood that in the beginning, some of the contemporaries of Baladeva, the elder brother of Lord Krishna, also visited the sacrificial place. According to some authorities, the present tense is also used to indicate the nearest margin of time from the past. In that sense, the present tense is applied to the reign of Maharaj Prikshit here. For a continuous fact also, present tense can be used. The principles of Maharaj Prikshit can be still continued and human society can still be improved if there is determination by the authorities. We can still purge out of the state all activities of immortality, uh, immorality introduced by the personality Kali if we are determined to take action like Maharaj Prikshit. He allotted some place for Kali. But in fact, Kali could not find such places in the world at all because Maharaj Pariksit was strictly vigilant, vigilant to see that there were no places for gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Modern administrators want to banish corruption from the state, but fools as they are do not know how to do it. They want to issue licenses for gambling houses, wine and other intoxicating drug houses, brothels, hotel prostitution and cinema houses, and falsity in every dealing, even in their own. And they want at the same time to drive out corruption from the state. They want the kingdom of God without God, uh, without God consciousness. How can it be possible to adjust two contradictory matters? If we want to drive out corruption from the state, we must first of all organize society to accept the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. And to make the condition favorable, we must close all places of gambling, drinking, prostitution, and falsity. These are some of the practical lessons from the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada Patita Pavani Ki Jai. So we see that Prabhupada is saying it's, it's, you, he, he basically want to, wanted to establish ISKCON so that an example could be given to the mass of people that it is possible to live a life without these four pillars of sinful activity and develop an ideal society where people are happy, they make spiritual advancement, they don't, they're not fooled by material science and materialistic philosophies and miracle drugs and so forth. Rather, they live a simple life based on or with the purpose of developing Krishna consciousness. And that's the solution to all problems of life. This is predicated on the, on the uh, clear-cut description of the real nature of the material world. The real nature of the material world is asasvatam. It's temporary and full of misery, dukalayam, or as it says, anityam, Asukam lokam. It's a temporary place, and and it's uh, uh, full of misery. Or dukalayam asasvatam. It is a place of miseries, and it's temporary. Or it is abrama bhuvana loka punar avartin original mama peti tukonteya punar jamana vidyate. From the highest planet and material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery, wherein repeated birth and death takes place. So, 
do we accept this as a description of the material world? Most people would not. Or let's say uh, a certain number of people would not accept this. I said, what do you mean? Oh, it's so beautiful to see the sunrise in the morning and the sunset, the sunset at night. And it's so beautiful to see people doing good things like giving five dollars to a, a homeless person even though he might go buy some beer with it. And, 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 and see skyscrapers, these m amazing metropolises with these amazing buildings, and to see this and to see that. Well, uh, there may be uh, certain things that look nice in material nature, but the, the nature itself is one of, uh, of misery because everyone is suffering. No one is free of, of the suffering. And everyone feels anxiety and depressed sometimes and defeated sometimes. And, and so this duality of love and hate, success and failure, riches and poverty, heat and cold, uh, winter and, and summer and so forth, all these dualities and then uh, punctuated with natural catastrophes like flooding, diseases, and uh, tsunamis, and earthquakes, and then even compounded with war, and violence, and arguing, and cheating, and lying. So we see that, that it's, it's a mixed bag, but the, the predominant part of material life is suffering. <clears throat> okay, so unless we're convinced of that, we would not be, we're not going to hear an alternative. So there's two types of preaching. One is negative preaching, one is positive preaching. So we can always dwell on the negative, but that doesn't get people inspired. That just depresses them. Or we can always uh, impress or, or put the uh, emphasis on the positive. Well, the positive is transcendental life and Krishna consciousness and transcendental uh, life in the spiritual world or liberation from uh, the, the situation in the material world. Uh, but the problem with that is that people think it's like a fairy tale and they don't think that they're capable of doing you know, chanting 16 rounds, waking up in the morning, bathing regularly, giving up sense gratification. It seems to be, to them, an impossible thing to do. So they don't take it seriously. And when they hear the description of the spiritual world, for them it's like Alice in Wonderland. You know, it's not, it doesn't make any uh, impression that, yes, that's what I want. Oh, they might say that, but they don't think it's possible. So. Therefore, there has to be a practical example of an ideal society, even if it's a microcosmic example, where people can see, well, you know, this thing looks like it's working, and I, I didn't think it was possible, but it is possible that people can live happy, productive lives without being uh, oppressed by modern technology and false philosophies and politics and love and hate and war and all these things. So, therefore, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is the attempt to create an ideal society of ideal people. And, and that can be an inspirational example for the rest of humanity. And if we can do that, and this is what the Prabhupada wants, then we have the strength spiritual strength to preach because we're not talking about something idealistic anymore. We're talking about something practical that people can see, touch, hear, taste, etc. And therefore, uh, they become inspired that, okay, these people did it. That means it's possible. And, and therefore, we should try for this. So the the, the main point is to gain the confidence of people 
once they're confident that you're genuine and you actually have attained this transcendental plane of, of, of life and Krishna consciousness, then they take it seriously. And the more sincere people will say, well, I'm going to give it a try. So in this way, uh, there is positive preaching by speaking and there's positive preaching by giving an example or living. And that's the strongest, uh, let's say, way to convince people. They have to be sure that we're, and the first principle is honesty. They have to be sure we're honest, we're not cheating, we're not lying. And then they have to see that we are clean, mentally and physically. And they have to see that we have a simple life, uh, a life of simple austerity, not something impossible that no one can do, but simple austerity. And uh, then uh, also they have to see that we are uh, free of the normal vices that people have. And, you know, intoxication, illicit sex, gambling, and so forth. So, uh, and above all, they have to see that the devotees are merciful and forgiving. And, uh, but yet, they're not wimps, they're not pushovers, they're not ignorant. When it's a strong stand has to be taken, uh, the devotees are able to do it. So, what does this all mean? It means that the devotees should be the leaders of society by example. Example speaks louder than words. So, Prabhupada says we can, the principles of Mahārāja Pariksha can still, can be still continued and human society can still be improved if there is determination by the authorities. We can still purge out from the state, all the activities of immorality introduced by the personality of Kali, if we are determined to take action like Maharaj Pariksit. So, are we determined to take action like Maharaj Pariksit? That is the question. Uh, and, uh, and it's a great responsibility. But, as Krishna says, it's happily performed. To succumb kartam avyam, and it's unending. So uh, we should not be afraid of taking a strong determination to change society. That is, uh, so there's some people say, well, look, I just want to have a peaceful life. I don't want to get involved in all these things. As soon as you, you make noise publicly, you know, you attract uh, all the demons that come to try and destroy you. Well. That's if you're threatening, but if you're instructing and giving an example of mercy, austerity, cleanliness, truthfulness, that's a different way of convincing people. One way is by threatening. Another way is by uh, demonstrating a plausible and an attractive alternative. And that's what we're trying to do, is give that attractive alternative. <clears throat> Just like now, uh, in the, in the uh, news, uh, that uh, the mayor of Seattle is not gonna run for a second term. Why? Because she's more or less a moderate Democrat, and but she has a uh, fanatical uh, city council made up of fa fanatics uh, or people who want to see communism established. So she's not progressive enough, and she realizes that, and everything she's done more or less has been a failure. So she's giving up and letting them take over the, uh, the administration of the city. So they'll, they'll elect a person, one of their own, 
who is a, a fanatic. So who knows what's going to happen to Seattle? I mean, it's already downtown Seattle is already a mess. Uh, it'll only get worse uh, with, a, with a completely fanatical uh, mayor. Now, this is interesting because the more economic development there is in the United States, the more homelessness and the more uh, people falling through the cracks and becoming homeless or becoming uh, indigent uh, appears. This is an interesting thing. It's not that when the tide rises, all the boats rise with it. Uh, there is this phenomenon, and, and actually Karl Marx analyzed this uh, 150, 160 years ago. He said, inherent in capitalism is certain faults, that there will be periodic uh, downturns in the economy, and many people will suffer because of it. So, uh, why? Because uh, there's only one way of managing society in which everyone has a possibility of being happy, and that is by having a ruler like Maharaj Brikshit or Maharaj Yudhisthira, who's, or, or Lord Ramachandra, who's, who's, who's a perfect human being and has, has all the good qualities of a pure devotee. And at the same time, the courage of a Kshatriya. You have to have both, not just all the qualities of a pure devotee, you also have to have the, the courage and the, and the fortitude of a Kshatriya. So, all these experiments in trying to create a uh, paradise on earth, Prabhupada says, actually it ends up being parasites on earth, <laughs> as opposed to para paradise, you get parasites you know, just sucking the, the blood of all the people. So, uh, many attempts have been made throughout history uh, and in modern times, let's say, in the last four or 5,000 years to create ideal societies and all, they all failed because it was not based on the model of Rajarsis, ruling, you know, saintly people ruling the state who are at the same time Chatriyas, uh, so a Rajarasi is a person who is Raja, a king, and also a, a Rishi, a, a, a devotee. So he's not just uh, uh, one thing, he's many things at once, a pure devotee and a person who has tremendous courage and strength to take a position. So that's why, uh, in, in Prabhupada, uh, characterizes society today. It's a kingdom of God. No, they want a kingdom of God without God. So it's not going to work. That's the whole point. It's just not going to work. So communism is an atheistic philosophy. Karl Marx was an atheist. So although he said things that sounded good on paper, but whenever you try and put it into uh, reality, it doesn't work. And the same with capitalism, it doesn't work because some people become very rich and some people become very poor. The, the example is Russia itself. Russia was a so-called communist state. It was not really pure communist because they never got out of the transitional stage. And they tried to eliminate uh, the different classes in society and have a classless society. They failed on that. They tried to uh, create this ideal society where the workers are the owners, but that failed. And in the end, uh, what they did was in the beginning after the First World War, after they got rid of the Tsar and, and all the, uh, the rich people, uh, they would go to villages where the villagers were starving, and they said, now pray to God for bread. So everyone would say some prayer, and no bread. He said, now pray to us, the communists, for bread. And they had brought a whole truckload of bread, and the people would pray to them, and then they'd hand out the bread. They'd say, see, there's no God, but 
our communist, uh, you know, philosophy is better than God because we can actually give you the bread. Well, 80, 70 years later, the Soviet Union collapsed because it couldn't feed its own people. It had to import food from the United States to feed their own people. So, and, and they were spending so much money on defense and armaments and not enough on improving the uh, supply chain, uh, even though Russia, is, and well, at Russia at that time, or the Soviet Union at that time had Ukraine, which is a breadbasket like California. It produced a tremendous amount of wheat and other things. But because of communism, nobody wanted to work hard. And everyone was cheating. It's called trickle-down cheating. Because the guys on the top were cheating, the people on the bottom were also cheating. And the whole system collapsed. And then they broke up into little, uh, a lot of different countries and independence. And then uh, Russia still is the biggest physically uh, of all those countries, but it's tremendously diminished from the Soviet Union. So we see that Krishna consciousness is the only solution, but we have to be convinced of that, and we have to give an example of it that works, and the people see it, and they say, this is it, you've done it. We want to be part of this. Right? So then if we want to drive out corruption from the state, we must first of all organize society to accept the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. And to make the condition favorable, we must close all places of gambling, drinking, prostitution, and falsity. Well, we have to do that inside of ISKCON first. And we have to... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in that way, drive out any corruption in ISKCON and organize society on the principles of these four universal principles of, of spirituality. So, uh, this is the way to preach. You preach by explaining things that make sense to people. So, it makes sense that a person should be clean. It makes sense this person should be self-controlled. It makes sense that a person should be compassionate and merciful. It makes sense that a certain should be, a person should be truthful. These things make sense. And these principles exist to one degree or other in every religion. And even in non-religious philosophies, such as uh, Marxism or communism, they want the people to be good. They want them to share things. So you have examples of that. You have the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch or the Amish, and you have people living on kibbutzes, and, and you have uh, uh, primitive societies still uh, living in the jungles uh, around the world, and native people. So this uh, principle of goodness, living in cooperation with nature, believing in God, and these are things that, that have existed for, from the beginning of time but they've deteriorated seriously over time. So, so you have people who share things, but only with their own people. And like the American Indians, you know, we think that they're like one monolithic, let's say, culture in the United States. It's not true. Before the white people came to North America, the Indians were killing each other. You look at Hawaii. Hawaii, you think, oh, well, you know, they're peaceful. They like peace. No, they were killing each other, the tribal people in, or the native people in Hawaii. You, you read, if you go to Honolulu, and you go up a little bit into the mountains, you'll see uh, you'll, there is this one place you go where one king from one island attacked uh, uh, Oahu, and, and uh, they cornered uh, a lot of uh, people on this mountain, and they threw them off, off, the, off the mountain. Did you, ever, did you ever visit that place? No? In Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you go there, <laughs> you can visit it. So you go see this, this, this cliff on this mountain, you know, and then have this big sign. This is where they were thrown off. You know, thousands of uh, Hawaiians were 
killed by Hawaiians, right? So uh, the, the, an ideal society, uh, as Prabhupada is explaining it, has to be there in order to convince people that it's possible. So uh, these are some of the practical lessons from the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So the sages in Naima Sirenya uh, had this meeting for a thousand years and he discussed all these points. And today it's preserved in this Srimad Bhagavatam. Whether we can do it or not, that's a whole question. And we have to be determined to do it. Okay, so are there any questions? Speak into the mic. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, you had mentioned uh, devotees should have a courage to act as Kshatriya. To what? Uh, devotees uh, should have a courage to act as a Kshatriya. Well, they have to take a stand. Just like it says here that uh, if we are determined to take action like Maharaj Pariksit, then we can purge from the state all the activities of immorality introduced by the personality of Kali. Okay, that's what he said, yeah. So, so all the devotees can have this courage or just like certain devotees, those have a tendency of Kshatriya? Well, see now Prabhupada, he had that courage. He's not a Kshatriya, but he's a pure devotee. That's one example. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had that courage. He was okay. not a Chatriya. But he had that determination, faith in Krishna, and determination to help the living entities in this world. There's so many examples. Okay. Narada Muni. Right? Ramanujacharya, he wasn't a, he wasn't a Chatriya. The Chatriyas were trying to kill him. Right. But he took stands, you know. What was the stand? He established a large society of devotees. He used to travel with 1,000 sannyasis and 300 uh, women who were like sannyasis and, and preach village to village. Imagine how that would be here today. We, if we go with 1,000 devotees, downtown and chant Hare Krishna, they say. And, uh, and, but not just once a year, every, every weekend or, or every day. Uh, eventually the, the, the message gets out. Okay. Yeah. Hare Bo. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.